So the first part of the setup is uh, checking on the system preferences, actually to enable UPT. So uh, let's have a look in the application. So we go to sitemap and uh, find the system preferences and then find all the system preferences uh, for UPT. So uh, first you have to set enable UPT to true, of course. Uh, also enable UPT context needs to be to true for test automation. And uh, the UPT max record cache, uh, you should keep to the minimum uh, and default value of 100. Uh, don't worry about the UPT log path at the moment. That's for bulk recording only. So you can keep that on the default setting. And next we check on the uh, server configuration settings, uh, enterprise profile and component or component definition parameters. Let's look at the Siebel Management Console, for example. Uh, of course, you can use Server Manager or any other means to do that. So here we go to the Enterprise Profiles. And we locate the Automation Subsystem. And there's just three parameters. And you only need to fill in one parameter. That's the container URL. Uh, now that container URL, it's very okay to keep it HTTP and using localhost and then followed by the Tomcat port of the SES Tomcat on that machine. It will be a local connection from a component on that machine to that very Tomcat. So that's the typical value here. And any other um, parameters should be left empty. Now let's look at the uh, component parameter. So the component definition or component level parameter that we are looking for, let's say for call center here. That's enable automation. Here it is. And of course it needs to be set to uh, true. And make sure after all the settings in total, make a full restart of your enterprise, so all, all the components, etc. read in the correct values. So next uh, we take a look at the runtime events uh, and the KWD action set, uh, which are actually seeded and enabled by default. And we must of course take special care that they are the only active runtime events for test recording and uh, we don't have any interfering UPT events. So let's find the uh, KWD action set. Again, this is a seed action set, seed data, so it should be in your database if you're on 17 or higher. Uh, it does one simple business service call and the business service is the usage pattern service with the usage log. So you might have if you, if you use UPT, you might have similar action sets, which you should deactivate. So, but keep the KWD active, of course. And let's look at the events which use this action set. So query in events view for KWD action set. And there are nine events, also seed data. And uh, the conditional expression is preventing them from firing under non-recording circumstances. So um, that is very safe to, to keep them that way. And if you have any other events triggering UPT, they should be turned off as, as we said. So with that in place, uh, there's one workflow to activate. Let's check that one out. And that is the test script import workflow, and it's active in our system. And uh, if you have, if you use the uh, UPT process to, um, as a repeating job, uh, to import the UPT data, also stop that because it would destroy your collected UPT data. And now let's look at DISA. 
so these are needs to be installed on each of the client machines. So that limits the client machines to Windows. Uh, so we got a recent version of DESA here. And for test automation, DESA requires a bit of setup. So let's go to the DESA installation folder. Desktop in Siebel Agent. Test automation is a plugin. And there is a unit config.xml file. And that provides the defaults for the unit tests. Uh, so here you have the URL uh, for the application to call. So make sure that's valid. And also the default username and the browser and application type. So for example, desktop underscore Chrome. The final thing we need is actually a browser driver for that browser. So let's see if we have that one. The browser driver executable should be in the drivers folder. So there's a current Chrome driver. And in case uh, you get stuck with recordings uh, not working or replays not working, actually, uh, then uh, maybe check your browser version because it could update automatically. So this is version 80 currently of Google Chrome. And you could just look for the Chrome driver downloads. On the internet. So here's the yeah, Chrome driver download site. And make sure you download the correct version of Chrome driver for matching the version of your browser. Of course, there are other browser vendors have a browser driver too, so make sure you have those in case you use different browsers. So, okay, our Chrome driver is in place. And uh, now a quick note about certificates. So uh, any connection made to Siebel uh, internally and externally is using HTTPS. So uh, on Windows machines, make sure the machine uh, and also the user account connected to that machine can uh, can trust uh, the Siebel server. So uh, we use usually the Internet Explorer on Windows or the registry to import that. So let's have a quick look. Uh, we can launch into that dialog from uh, Chrome settings as well. So there's the manage HTTP as SSL settings and in the trusted roots config uh, certification author authorities you need to import the root certificate of your Siebel enterprise and do that as the user that you run um, the the test client under that you log in. So you can also check if you're on this on the same user account if your browser accepts the certificate as a safe, then that's a good um, that's a good indicator that the certificates are correctly configured. And now, with all this in place, uh, let's uh, have a quick look at the test recording. So the SWE command auto on parameter is the last stepping stone we need to add to the URL. So here. Uh, let's just log out quickly of that Siebel call center application. And in my shortcut, I have the command already in as part of the URL. So you only need that appended to your URL to get a test automation enabled session. And you can immediately see that everything's in place if you see the re recording or camcorder icon on the top right corner. And now let's click that icon. It opens the recording menu and start a quick recording just to test. So recording uses runtime events and UPT. So we're testing that one. Well, let's go to maybe account list, uh, create a new record. And uh, if you worried about duplicates, uh, use the dollar uh, variable placeholder will be replaced uh, at, uh, if the test replays with a timestamp. Uh, save that record. Go back to 
the home view and stop the recording. Okay, next step is actually to generate the temporary script using the generate button, one script generated. And we can see the generated scripts in the scripts panel. Uh, here it is, uh, just current, not played yet. So now let's test the DSA part for the unit test and click the play button, which actually invokes the DSA session. You see the defaults from the XML file. Let's fill in the password for the user. And now after clicking OK, I will not touch the mouse again for a while and let's just see if the browser driver can open the browser. Yes, correctly done. It's already logging in to a new session and well, replaying the script that we just recorded. So going to the account list, creating new account. And you see that timestamp added instead of the dollar. It's already saved it and navigates away and logs out. So that's a very brief test. And we should get a report displayed as well. There it comes up. And the report stored in the local DSA folder for now. So that was a successful uh, unit test. So now we literally tested the test script that it runs the way we want. So now the final step is to select the test script or more than one and import it. This will actually remove the temporary script and create Siebel records, test script records, test script and test steps, which we can see in the release screen. So let's go to the release screen and go to test scripts. And here's the script that we just imported. There it is. Let's drill down on it. And we see all the steps we recorded. So these records are created completely automatic. And now we can, of course, go and edit our script and retest using uh, the play button on the top applet um, according to whatever it is we want to achieve with that particular test script. And uh, that's uh, the end of this demonstration. Thank you very much.